Morning internet, it is me, George Isted, the silent boat butler, and this is my boat. And this is a bit of an unusual experimental video. Um, I thought I'd do a day in the life of, and um, I have no idea if that will be of interest to the people that watch my show, but uh, I'm doing some interesting stuff today. Um, well, hopefully it's interesting. I find it interesting, but then I quite enjoy my boats because I get paid to play with boats all day, which is rather nice. Um, it beats doing IT stuff, which is what I used to do in a long lost previous life. Um, anyway, this is gonna be a day in the life. It is about quarter to seven in the morning. It's a beautiful sunny day. The sun is streaming in the uh, port lights on my boat here, which is why I've got the blinds closed so that you can see me. I've got a cup of tea. I'm about to make some toast, uh, stick that in the toaster and have some breakfast. And then first job today is I'm going to be jumping in my rib, but I'll tell you more about that in just a second. There we go, that's my intro done. Um, so one of the things that I do as part of my job is I go and do pre-purchase inspections. I am not a surveyor. I do not write reports and do all of that sort of stuff. I don't have the insurance in place to be a surveyor, although arguably I do have the experience in order to go and look at a boat and see if there's a problem with it uh, and tell people whether it's a good buy or not and give a rough valuation for a boat. I do that quite often for people who want to look at Contessas specifically because of my background and knowledge with them, but I do look at other boats as well. So um, this morning I've been asked by a gentleman to go and look at a boat that is on the Isle of Wight over there. Um, so I'm going to jump in my rib uh, and uh, buzz over to Yarmouth, go and inspect this boat, take a few pictures, make a few notes, buzz back, give him a call at some point once I've assimilated all my notes into an email and fire that across to him and go through the boat with him and give him a view on whether it's a boat that he would want to buy or not. Um, why do people pay me to do that rather than just going and having a look at themselves? Well, maybe it's lack of time, maybe it's lack of knowledge, um, maybe it's because they live a long way away. Um, I've been doing quite a lot of uh, viewings for a couple of clients that are abroad who are looking for a particular boat and they haven't yet found the boat that they want to, but um, they've sent me off around the country looking at a few boats over the last couple of months, um, which has been great fun for me because I get to look at lots of different contessas um, and uh, help uh, a prospective buyer find exactly what they are after. Um, um, so anyway, yeah, today I am going to be buzzing over, doing that, coming back, and then I need to get back on with Lottie. If you've been following the Project Lottie series, um, that boat uh, refit has been restarted again after a bit of a break. So I've got lots of work to do on Lottie, uh, and I'm really quite enjoying getting on with her because we're in the kind of the final straight now because I haven't got any other jobs really booked in apart from little odds and sods like this morning. So I'm gonna be uh, pushing on with Lottie uh, this afternoon with a bit of painting, a bit of varnishing. At some point I need to start taking the windows out. I need to start putting the floor in, but that's uh, for another day. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna grab some breakfast and I'm gonna take you with me on my day in a life of the Solent Boat Butler. Right, I've got my toast now, there we go. This is really is nuts and bolts um, day in the life of. What I forgot to say is my plan is to kind of do very minimal editing on this video, just to try and give you as realistic a flavor as possible uh, about what I kind of get up to. So there's gonna be all sorts of nonsense from me, lots of mumbling, lots of uh, talking to camera, getting things wrong, and uh, well, we'll just see how it works out, really. It is an experiment. Come along for the ride. Ah. Mmm, lovely. I love blackcurrant jam. It reminds me of my grandparents because my mother's parents used to grow blackberries and my grandmother used to make blackcurrant jam homemade, and I've loved it ever since. Best stuff ever. Just been outside and removed the cover off my rib, put a bit of air in the tubes, 
tubes have got a very slight leak in it. It's a pretty old rib, to be perfectly honest with you, and I've not had it very long, so I'm still learning um, about uh, what its foibles are. I already know the steering is a little bit notchy, and I want to um, make some changes to that at some point. Pack my bag, um, so I've got all the bits that I need to take with me to look at a boat. So you might be asking, what do I take with me when I go and look at a boat for a customer? So there's a few essential bits of equipment I always take. Uh, one is my brain and my eyes, because that is what mostly gets used. Um, just looking around the boat um, but in terms of tools I always take my moisture meter assuming the boat's out of the water and I can stick the moisture meter on the hull uh, and just see what sort of readings I'm getting off of that just to see how damp the laminate is obviously using my eyes I can see if there are any um, blisters normally because I am not doing a survey as such normally the seller or the broker won't allow me to remove any anti-fouling um, and see the surface of the hull so I just have to do moisture readings through the anti-fouling which is not ideal but also it does give an indication it's a, a good enough starting point just to report back to the owner um, I also take a screwdriver or a hammer or some other slightly um, hard object which I can tap uh, the boat with so I will want to look at certain areas of the boat just to check secondary bonding where I know that they tend to fail if they're going to fail I know where they're going to fail on the contessa so I can have a good tap around just to see if the boat is reasonably sound um, obviously take my phone so I can take lots of pictures take a notebook and a pen and a spare pen because you can guarantee if you only take one pen it won't work also where do all the pens go I just seem to lose pens like there's no tomorrow. I get through, I must get through three or four pens a week because they just disappear. I never find them again. They just, maybe they fall out of my pockets. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I've got to go and buy some more pens because I'm virtually out. Uh, so paper, pen, uh, torch to have a look in dark recesses into bilge areas where there's no lighting and that's about it. There is one essential piece of equipment that I haven't yet got, which I'm going to make now. First part of essential ingredient, kettle on. While I think of it, I'm probably not going to be able to record the inspection out of respect to the owner of the boat and the broker. I haven't asked permission to do that and I always, always ask permission of any boat owners where I'm doing work and I might be doing some filming. So I'm not going to be able to film the boat inspection itself, but at some point I might do a fake, uh, staged inspection of a Contessa. Um, I will uh, then record that and I can show you maybe some of the things to look at on a uh, Contessa or a similar boat that's of a similar age and design. While that coffee's brewing, I'll take you outside and show you the boat. Don't mind the funny sticker. That's a um, an interesting story for another time about being anchored out in the Caribbean somewhere where I shouldn't have been anchored. Oh, there we go. That is my rib. It's only four and a half meters long, but it's perfect as a little work boat for me to get to and from jobs with a 50 horse, two stroke outboard on the back. It will do about 30 knots flat out, which is a little bit sketchy. It has to be said, it's not a particularly heavy rib. It does get up and plane fairly readily. Um, I think doing kind of 18 to 22 knots is nice comfortable speed for it. Um, carries about 25 litres of fuel in the fuel tank that's connected into the engine. Then I've got two more cans of 10 litres. So I've got 45 litres on board, which is plenty. What I particularly like about the rib and why I chose this one is it's got that jockey seat there, but it's also kind of got that double bench seat there. So actually if you have a passenger they can sit reasonably comfortably. Not everyone wants to sit on a jockey seat. And just for bimbling up and down the river, going to jobs, that is just the job. Right, well, as you can see, the light is horrible here for filming. 
uh, but I've got all my gear on, so I'm not expecting it to be too wet on the way over there, but there's gonna be a bit of wind over tide and there might be a bit of silent chop, so I've got my full wet weather gear on. Importantly, got my life jacket on, useless and less worn, but also useless if you don't do it up, so I'll do that up in a minute, including the crotch strap, which goes up under your legs. Um, I will be taking, because safety first, or at least, you know, second or third, um, handheld VHF. Uh, shouldn't need it, but it's always good to have it. It also has a GPS built into it, this one, so I can see how fast I'm going, so I don't speed in the river. Um, I wouldn't do that anyway, because I hate it when people go past my boat, creating lots of wash. It's really, really annoying. Uh, please don't do it, so I'm pretty good, mostly. Sailors who also own motorboats or ribs or whatever generally are the best motorboatists I find because they are aware of their surroundings so much more than the average motorboatist. Um, I don't want to turn this into a rant about motorboatists who are selfish individuals, so I'm not going to go there. Um, right, got coffee, got VHF, got my gear outside, I'm going to get in the rib. Has to be said, it's pretty nice just being able to bimble down the river. There's a very pretty red Contessa. Uh, it's very nice to be able to bimble down the river just looking at all the boats on a sunny, kind of late spring, early summer day. Oh, there's another Contessa over there as well, just going behind that oyster thing. As far as commutes go, it's not a bad one, is it? Well, that's me back on the River Hamble, just heading back up to where I'm based at the top of the river. I'm um, sorry, the camera's a little bit wibbly wobbly because I've just propped it on the front seat. Um, 
It was quite nice being able to buzz over there and back and do that little inspection. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't video it, but it didn't seem like the right thing to do. I'll possibly post a few pictures uh, whilst I'm talking to you now of the boat. Um, but essentially, she's a pretty good 32. Um, no major issues really that I could spot. There's a few minor things that need doing. Uh, there's a bit of secondary bonding failure in a few places uh, where they have a tendency to go. Someone's had a, a, a go at repairing it in a couple of places. Um, but uh, she's been resprayed and the hull looks really nice. The underwater hull is very dry with my moisture meter on there. I could pick up a few little wet spots, but on the whole, the numbers were very acceptable. Um, uh, instrumentation was pretty basic to be honest with you. Um, it had a load of NASA stuff in it. I'm not a big fan of NASA. Um, they're fine at the price point, but frankly, um, if you can afford a boat, you can afford something a bit better than NASA, um, in my view. Uh, and um, yeah, on deck, deck has been painted and probably could do with being painted again, but really nice cockpit. Cockpit teak's been replaced. Windows have been replaced. Sails all look good. Um, and no major issues. So I'm just going to carry on bimbling up the river here. There's some nasty black clouds with rain coming out of them behind me. So I'm going to put the camera away. And uh, when I get back up the road, I will tie the boat up, put the kettle on. I'm going to have to write up my notes and send them across to the gentleman who is uh, paying me to uh, do this inspection. Uh, send him a lot of pictures and then arrange a time to call him. So um, if you're wondering how much this all costs, so I charge for my time uh, just to go and do it at my normal standard rate. Um, so uh, I charge 40 pounds an hour plus the VAT to, um, to do work on boats and do inspections. So um, I'll be billing him for my time to go there, do the inspection, come back, write up my notes, and then I'll put an extra hour on that probably for time on the phone uh, with him to go through all the pictures and go through the notes. Um, and then he's in a position to decide whether he wants to move forward with the boat, whether he wants to visit himself, whether he wants to put an offer in potentially for it. Um, but that is obviously at his discretion. I can't remember where the chap lives. I know he's not local, which is why he got me to have a look. But um, uh, we shall see what he says. Anyway, it's a beautiful day at the moment, apart from those big black clouds. So I'm just going to look where I'm going, stop talking to camera, and I'll catch you in a bit. Well, excitement of the day is done. I really enjoyed buzzing over to Yarmouth and back and doing that inspection, but um, back to real life. So I am over in my workshop here. Um, behind me is some um, varnishing that I've got on the go. So these are bunk boards. Uh, they need a second coat on the opposite side of them under, under there. See, that's not very shiny. That's nice and shiny. So um, they need a second coat and then that can harden, then they can get a flat down and then another coat of varnish. I'm gonna finish them eventually with a uh, rubbed effect or satin uh, finish varnish. So I'm going to uh, flip all those over, mix up some more um, varnish and by mix up, I mean pour some out, thin it slightly uh, so it will um, uh, roll out nicely and uh, get cracking. we go, varnishing done. I am now going to leave this for a couple of days to harden off because I think after one day it isn't going to be sandable because uh, this is a traditional gloss varnish. So um, two days is perfect just to give it a quick um, sand just to knock down any high spots or denib it as some people call it. Um, it's looking nice and glossy. So uh, back to the boatyard where I have some more painting to do. Quick side note, whilst I think about it, I had a small amount of varnish left over. It's in that pot. I also had a bit left over in the roller tray, which I have cleaned. There is a temptation to stick it back in the tin. Please, 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 if you want good results, do not put it back in the tin because it will have almost certainly picked up dust, dirt, and muck and other stuff. And then when you go to pour out your varnish to use next time, then it has bits in it. Now, 
In theory, I could have filtered that varnish and put it back in the pot. And in theory, you can filter the varnish when it comes out of the pot, although I find generally you don't need to as long as you keep the pot clean. So um, if you want good results, do not try and stretch your varnish and put it back in the pot and reuse it because it's just not worth the effort. Back on Lottie and all this paint that I put on yesterday has gone off it's cured so um, that's all dry i'm going to come back in now and put a second coat all over and then once that is done i'll be able to start thinking about maybe removing some of the varnish i've got some u-bolts to go back in so drill holes fit u-bolts there fit the stanchion back in up there fit a u-bolt up there with a backing plate um, there's loads of work to do now I'm not going to record the painting, there is only so much internet to go around and I don't want to waste it with more painting. So I'm going to crack on, do less talking, do more working and I'll see you afterwards. And there we have that second coat of white Belgian locker paint inside all the lockers. It's really covered in super nicely, looking great. First coat was looking very, very patchy. It's very tempting to put a third coat on. I haven't decided yet. I think I'm going to see what it looks like tomorrow once it's done, once it's all cured. Um, it probably, I'm not going to say it needs it. I think it might be a good idea to have it because um, it just gives a bit more material on there if it needs to be scrubbed clean at some point in the future. But um, it's looking good. Unfortunately, it's raining outside now. I had planned to do some gel coat repairs outside, but as you can see on the window there, oh no, you can't see because of the light. It is raining, it's not very pleasant. So um, I think I'm going to head back to uh, SBB HQ and uh, do some paperwork. Well, this is the bit that people don't normally see. And uh, whilst uh, my customers see the invoices with the time involved in doing the works that I do, they don't see the amount of hours that I have to spend in front of my laptop, ordering parts, producing invoices, doing accounts, um, in investigating different products for potential use on customers' boats. Um, it all takes time and it's quite often the case that I will be on my laptop three, four hours a day in the evenings or in the mornings, kind of sorting out um, paperwork stuff. Um, and it's just part of running a small business. Um, so do bear that in mind when you are trying to get hold of me or another person who is effectively self-employed without staff. Um, there's actually quite a lot of admin involved. And um, if you have emailed me, if you're watching this, if you have emailed me and I haven't responded, um, I'm very sorry that is just, you're in the list of people to come back to, but I have a little bit of a backlog to um, respond to emails at the moment. But anyway, that's a flavour of a typical day for a silent boat butler. Now, at some point, I need to edit this video. I said at the start that I'm going to make this a fairly um, edit-free video, but I've still got to splice it all together and um, render it. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that was interesting. And uh, stay tuned. I'll be back on Boatworks in the next episode. Cheers for now. Bye.